Hello, everybody. We'll get started. Um, thank you for joining this uh, Weave online user group or uh, GitOps community group. We have several online through various meetup channels. So hopefully you uh, found us this way. Uh, my name is Tamo Nakahara. I run the developer experience team at Weaveworks uh, that has coined the term GitOps and um, has created the um, project called Flux that is in the process of final steps of graduation. Uh, and that project is what sort of kicked off this whole concept of GitOps. So hopefully either you're um, an existing user or you're just start getting started with GitOps, hopefully all of this will be useful for you. Uh, so today we're going to talk about flux security and scalability uh, with the ability to show that through this wonderful extension that we have um, within VS Code so that you can do GitOps capabilities uh, from within there. And we're really excited that um, Yosas is a new member of our team and has been working on this. So we're really excited that we'll be able to see this presentation and hopefully answer all of your questions. So please don't be shy about um, asking any questions in the Zoom chat here. So uh, if you haven't heard of us, uh, we work for a company called Weaveworks. Uh, we've been around now for about seven years. We're one of the earliest people to use uh, um, Kubernetes uh, in production. Um, we've also used it in the cloud for one of our products on AWS. Uh, and we're really, really founded on open source. Uh, as I mentioned, we're really excited that the Flux project, which also has a sub project called Flagger that does progressive delivery. Um, we have those in the cloud native computing foundation called the CNCF. Uh, so it's gone through um, you know, various validations, security audits and all that so that we have something that is really, really enterprise ready. And we have companies big and small who trust uh, Flux and Flagger to really have a great GitOps experience. Uh, we're also proud that companies such as Microsoft, uh, Amazon, D2IQ and others actually use Flux to deliver GitOps to their end customers. So if they trust um, the work that we've been doing, you know, it's a, it's a huge validation to know that we, we're creating something that's really secure and scalable, reliable and delivers all those great GitOps uh, um, benefits uh, to the to the to our customers and users. Um, we've also got many many other projects here, but I'll just do a quick call out to EKS Cuddle, um, which um, Amazon has basically adopted and helps with um, EKS cluster management. Um, we created that in the early days of when EKS came out. Um, and we're excited that, you know, Flux is so um, solid that we ourselves, WeaveWorks, have built our product on Flux, and it's called Weave GitOps. Um, there's two layers to it. There's a UI layer that has a few bells and whistles, and that's all open source and free. Um, so we'll share links if you want to try that out. It definitely enhances your Flux experience. Uh, and then, of course, we've got an enterprise level with full bells and whistles um, of things like trusted delivery and progressive delivery and everything that's all... Um, managed, of course, and supported at an enterprise level. Next slide. I don't know if we have a slow slide advancement. Oh, OK. So a little bit of housekeeping. Like I said, um, USS, our developer experience engineer, and I will be presenting to you. These usually last um, maybe 30 to 40 minutes. Um, but if there are lots of questions, we do extend. Um, but we do have a hard stop at 60 minutes. Um, I probably don't have to explain anything to, in Zoom anymore, but um, just make sure when you're asking your questions in the chat, unless you have anything really burningly private, please make sure that you chat to everyone um, so that uh, you know some people answer each other's questions and they can see your answers. Um, great. So as I mentioned, this is uh, one of our online meetups. If this is your first time, welcome. We're really glad that you joined. Uh, we are always having Vanessa here in the background, one of our community managers, always um, putting great content up there. So um, we've got some great upcoming events uh, in, the, in the next month here, um, all around various aspects of GitOps and sometimes around Flux. Sometimes we have guest speakers as well. So uh, you'll have an email follow up with all the links and uh, you can sign up for our meetup pages if you want. Want to know more. So um, before we go into what is GitOps, if it's new for you, we thought it might be enticing that um, Yosas give you a mini demo of what's to come. So we'll actually show you GitOps in action within um, VS Code. 
And, you know, hopefully some of you might say like, whoa, what did I just see? What just happened? And that's that's our point is that um, we will show you how to do that um, uh, partway through this talk. So right now we'll sort of show you the turkey dinner and then we'll show you how to make it. So Yozas will show you um, a deployment, uh, a GitOps deployment using uh, Flux and VS Code. Hi, um, it's very nice to meet everybody and welcome to our demo. Um, so I want to show you a, a very simple thing, uh, which uh, the most basic GitOps is uh, having your configuration in a Git repository, updating it and seeing it updated. So we now have this public repo, Flux OCI demo. And in there, I have a Git repository definition. Um, sorry, I had a technical error. Can, can you still see? Um, oh, we lost your screen. Okay, let's try this again. Share the screen. Okay, so there's a Git repository. There's an application. It defines a Git repository where the application is stored and a deployment via customization. So I'm going to use VS Code. And this is the repo. Uh, this is the app. And right now it uses this pod info example and the tag is 622. So we can see that uh, this is now deployed. Um, and here you can see the things that are deployed, including the pod info with the tag 622. If we load this, it should say 622. So very simply, we can we can update this to six two three and commit to get and commit sync changes. And now it's going to update the Git repository, which will update the OCI image, uh, which is currently verified with cosign, um, and then it will use that image to apply everything in the image, including this pod info, which will contain um, 633. Um, it, is using, it is using Git Actions to build the new image that contains new definitions. So we have to wait a second. Now we see it says 6233. Uh, and if we, if we start our port forwarding, you can see it's not looking what it should be looking. Okay. Okay. Now it's six two three. So a lot of things happened here at once. Uh, things were written to Git repository. Then they were saved into an OCI image. And then that OCI image was used to create a customization, to pull the image and apply everything from this Git repository. A new app version is deployed. Meanwhile, there exists an um, OCI image with this deployment information that you can go here and you can see the packages. This is the package. This is the this is a digest for it. And the digest, we can see in our VS code, it is signed. So this is this is the process. Uh, I, later on, I will demonstrate all the steps how to how you can create the same setup and have signed verified OCI images uh, as a source for your GitOps configuration. Thank you. Amazing, amazing. So I hope everybody's excited about that. Of course, it's a simple demo, but what's really important is, um, sorry, we can see your Slack, <laughs> by the way, you're still sharing your screen. Um, so what's really exciting about this is, you know, 
if, if you're new to this, hopefully the GitOps part is exciting. Um, you'll also be able to see the observability within VS Code. We already have tons of fans who are using this, so we'll, we'll cover that. And then, of course, um, you know, Flux supports OCI and Cosine now, and we've already had um, the OCI bits uh, included in there. So we'll talk about that. Um, so yeah, raise your hand if you are brand new to GitOps. We'd just be curious to know. You can use the little raise hand feature. Um, so GitOps is a coin that are uh, a word that our company coined um, to sort of recognize that there is a model that had been developing over the last couple of years that um, seemed to be, um, you know, kind of in the cloud native space and seemed to be becoming um, sort of a natural extension of Kubernetes. So we really do believe that GitOps is this natural extension to how Kubernetes works. Flux works together with Kubernetes to make it happen. And a core part of that and the value that it brings, it's, you know, it's using Git. Um, you don't have to use Git, but Git is, you know, one of the ways in which you have a versioned um, system that's a um, single source of truth. Um, and so many companies tell us about, you know, the value of like if they need to be audited and they need compliance, they've already got this, this method baked into how they do things. And so it makes things really easy. Um, and then automation, right? Uh, people really love GitOps for the automation that it brings, um, you know, monitoring, management, all that together. So that, you know, many teams have told us, you know, with their use of Flux with Kubernetes, they are able to work on, you know, innovating as opposed to a lot of manual tasks and kind of babysitting um, their deployments. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's important to clarify here that uh, GitOps works for both dev teams and infrastructure. Um, and what it does is also makes it so that you're doing things declaratively. So these are all these benefits, you know, and some basics that um, people are getting from GitOps. Now, much as WeaveWorks coined the term GitOps, we wanted to make sure that we didn't go into a place as everybody started using the word, that now there was like this competition between, well, this company defines GitOps in one way or we define it another way. We really wanted there to be a standard that was backed by a foundation. So one of the first things we did, we said, okay, we need to um, create a working group around GitOps and we need to make sure that we put this into the cloud native computing foundation where we have over 60 companies, maybe over 65 companies who've all been members of this working group, who have diligently you know, discussed and uh, agreed upon what they think the core principles are. So we really want it to be so that when a company um, or a project promises GitOps, that they are really um, um, aligning with these principles that we think are, are the basic starting points. And um, as I said, you know, to have a declarative um, system, um, which, you know, can take uh, a require a journey for some people, but that's definitely um, a base way in which GitOps can happen um, reliably. Um, as I mentioned, it's versioned and immutable, um, and it's based on a pool-based system, which I know sometimes um, requires sort of a, a change in philosophy, but also brings lots of benefits and security with it. So that's something that the working group has agreed on. And then of course, uh, the continu continuously reconciled aspects of GitOps um, makes it so that that um, can kind of finalize the, the value of that. And so these are the um, four GitOps principles that the working group has agreed upon within the CNCF, and we've definitely um, backed that. Um, so why would you want to do GitOps? Uh, so some of the things that, I, you know, I listed, like, um, you know, our companies, so many companies have shared, um, like at KubeCon and in other places, you know, why they've really benefited from GitOps, um, especially um, projects like Flux, you know, as I mentioned, we're like in the final stages of graduating in the CNCF. And that means that we've met their standards of security. We've gone through their third party security audits and, and met all their requirements. Um, companies can rely on GitOps bringing that added security. Uh, with OCI that we'll talk about, there's also, you know, security and um, um, scalability benefits um, that come with it. Uh, as I mentioned, automation um, and the developer experience helps that people can work on being more productive. Um, uh, companies have talked about doing more, um, even with a slim team that they might have. And importantly, if you have 
business critical apps. We were just talking with Flux users yesterday who have absolutely business critical apps or their enterprise customers have business critical apps um, using projects like Flux um, brings that um, reliability that GitOps brings. Um, and one thing I'll call out, as I mentioned, a sub project of Flux is called Flagger and it helps you do things like canary deployments um, and that leverages data from places like Prometheus and so many companies like at GitOpsCon at the recent um, um, KubeCon, um, Ring Central, for example, talked about how um, progressive delivery and being able to do the canary deployments with things like Flagger um, not only makes um, GitOps easier, but it makes it safer. It makes it so that people can deploy on a Friday and know that they can trust it. Um, so, of course, in our case, we're um, showing GitOps with this fantastic project Flux. So I'll hand it over to Yozas to explain a little bit about what Flux is and uh, what you'll be looking at. Um, Flux is a, a toolkit, um, a, a series of um, Kubernetes controllers that allow implement GitOps. Um, it's a package manager for your applications and a progressive delivery solution to Kubernetes. It monitors your version control system um, for things, uh, configuration that's declared. And any time something is changed in Git, it sees that change and it applies it to your infrastructure. So if your infrastructure is manually modified or something drifts, it will continuously reconcile to the definition of the desired state in Git. It removes a need for manual deployment process. Um, and uh, there's, there's a lot of benefits to Flux. It can be used in for apps and for infrastructure, and um, it works well with existing tools. Um, it, it can be used with GitHub, like in this demo, we'll use GitHub because it's it's very simple and supports all the features, but you can even use S3 buckets. There's Azure support. All major container registries are supported and different CIs can work with it as well. Uh, one very powerful thing about Flux is that it uses Kubernetes concepts and building blocks. So everything is built from Kubernetes CRDs and it uses Kubernetes RBAC to en enable multi-tenancy. It also has a lot of nice developer or DevOps experience tools, notifications, and alerts. And we pride ourselves on uh, having a friendly, uh, welcoming community. So we're always looking for contributions, comments, bug reports. Uh, we have regular events as well to work with the community. Okay, so these are the, the key points. It's extensible, it works with Kubernetes, and it has great support for Helm. Okay, uh, Flux is implemented as a modular system uh, and a series of controllers. Uh, so sometimes we call it GitOps Toolkit, but Flux is, is these GitOps Toolkit components. There's a source customized Helm control notification controller, as well as controllers for image, um, for applying new images to your configurations when they're built. Um, there's a bit more information in this slide about what the controllers do. Um, and it's it's pretty self, kind of self-explanatory. Even at first, it seems confusing. There's a lot of different moving parts, but it's organized in a logical way. So the source controller will get the manifest or we get, will get the information from Git. Or in this demo, we'll be using both Git and OCI repository source controller talks to these uh, systems and gets artifacts. And then customized controller uses those artifacts to apply whatever you have defined in Git to your cluster. Uh, Helm controller does this for Helm. Notification uh, provides events and notification dispatching. Image reflector and image automation uh, won't cover, but they allow you to modify your manifest when a new Docker images published, for example. So this is an overview of the controllers. And here we'll be using a Visual Studio Code extension that it helps with developer experiences. It's, 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 a, it's a simple extension, but it has some powerful features uh, that, especially with visualization and, and debugging that make it easy, especially for new users to understand what's going on and to see problems and to observe the GitOps configuration in, in, in process. So 
we're recommending this uh, for people who are starting out or people who are developers uh, and want to develop using GitOps um, to use an extension to get started and it will help them along the way. Um, okay. okay, so th this particular demo focuses on two new features of, of Flux, uh, so OCI and Cosign. OCI is a format for containers, same like a Docker image. It was founded by Docker, but because people were using Docker images, not just for storing application runtimes, but configurations and manifests, um, open container initiative decided it would be helpful to create a universal standard uh, that is a image that is uh, built or compiled and it is, it is complete, it's an artifact. But this artifact can store can store Kubernetes definition manifest or any kind of configuration. So for our purposes, it is a bit like a Git repository or a snapshot of a Git repository. And uh, it, it is essentially a tar or layers of tar files of metadata. And it's using increasingly widely in cloud infrastructures because you can use the same format for both the image and for a configuration for your application. Okay, so it seems to contradict some of what we were talking before because instead of using Git as a source of truth, we are now using OCI as a source of truth. But in fact, we're still using Git and we're adding additional step uh, to produce a Git snapshot and place it in OCI registry. Why, why do we want to do that? Because it provides significant scalability and security benefits. Um, so we're still going to Git, but we're we're taking we're taking another step that can be in a sense cached. And the infrastructure for working with OCI containers is much higher performance than, for example, connecting to uh, through SSH to Git. So we recommend this for larger scale deployments. And the artifacts from the registry can be better secured than contents of Git. So here's a slide, next slide. We'll, we'll explain some of, we'll overdo some of that. Even doing a shallow Git clone is a pretty expensive and slow operation. But meanwhile, registries are available everywhere. And furthermore, we get security benefits of IAM. Each cloud um, has it provides its own registries. So we can use cloud native or cloud provider identity tools uh, and gain security and authentication authorization through that. Um, you, you are using the same mechanism for everything. So it can be optimized better. And, and final thing is that the images themselves that we will be placing in OCI can be verified with cosign, which is the next slide. So cosign is a tool to help prevent increasing problem of software supply chain attacks. Someone can impersonate um, a registry or a source of Docker images and have a malicious image deployed with full privileges into production and cause havoc, steal data. So we can use the system called Cosign to sign each artifact and to verify that it came from legitimate producer. Um, Cosign was uh, sponsored, is sponsored by Open Source Security Foundation, and it uses OpenID Connect to initially verify your identity. It has its own root certificate authority and a public ledger to keep track of things as they're assigned. So you can be guaranteed that if, if someone claims that they're the author or some authorship is claimed for a container or image, we can verify that. And just like OCI, it supports integration with, with cloud um, IAM and key management systems. So it, it, it allows security in a, in a simple way to get started. Um, and so in this demo, we'll be using GitHub because it supports both OCI and Cosign 
and it makes it pretty easy to set up. Okay, so now it's demo time. I'm gonna share my screen and demonstrate how it works. Share this. Okay, so there's a thing that I forgot to do, which was to recreate the cluster. I'm going to do right now because so we're going to start from scratch. And while that's going on. Um, I want to show you how to install the extension if you don't have it already, or if you have it, you should know that there is a pre-release version. So right now I have a standard and which is more better tested and more stable, but we have some new features we want to show in this demo and we made it available through pre-release. So if you go to your extensions and you click switch to pre-release, we will install it. And then we can reload it. And now we have now we have this. Okay, so this is the old demo. We're going to start with a new demo. Okay, so actually I'm gonna I'm gonna reload this as well just to be sure. So so I have um, I have created a new empty repository, which is available in Flex OCI demo November 16th. And currently it has nothing, it just says install Flux. So we're going to do that. We're going to use GitOps um, extension. And we don't have anything, so we're going to enable GitOps, which we're going to run Flux install. Normally, we recommend that uh, users run Flux Bootstrap, which sets up Flux to update itself using GitOps. But in this demo, I'll show kind of building up Bootstrap Lite or DIY Bootstrap from scratch, uh, which also shows the concept of, of, of what Bootstrap is doing for new users. So later on, when you run Flux Bootstrap, it, it will be clear why, why you would do that. OK, so we have installed Flux. We have no sources, no workloads, and our cluster is doing nothing right now. So um, what I would like is to, um, to deploy an application to the cluster. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do here and create a source. And this will add both a source as well as customization, which will take uh, manifest from the source and deploy them to the cluster. So we're gonna, we're gonna deploy one called Proc Info. And this is going to second. We're going to use our customary um, pod info um, repository that contains um, in for example, and there's nothing nothing new to it. Maybe change the sync interval to 30 seconds. And it's gonna, we also want to create a customization. And again, everything is as expected, a customized folder inside the pod info repository. We were gonna prune it. And uh, this shows you what will happen. We can click YAML and this, demonstrates uh, what YAML will be generated. So we could apply this later, but here I'm just showing what will happen. Um, it does not always show the exact same thing because if you add secret references, the YAML will not have them. So you have to run the command line. But for now, we're gonna create a Git repository and pod info customization. We run create and it runs the CLIs and it creates the objects. It created the Git repository, we can see now. And it should also have created the customization. So this is the Git repository in our cluster. 
It's live, it has artifacts, conditions, um, and customization for the Git repository called info. So it's running now. And I think if I, if I do this, I should be able to see it loading on my local host on this port. Is it working? It's loading. Okay, here it is. It's now live on the kind cluster that I just created. And this is the most simple way to use Flux, it's just to tell it, look up a repository, look up some manifests inside the repository and apply them to the cluster. But this is this is not GitOps, this is just using Flux in, in the most direct way. For it to be GitOps, we want all this stuff to be saved in the repository. So we're going to start over a little bit um, and I should not have closed that window, but it's okay. We're going to um, we're going to create it again, but this time we're going to check it into repository. So this is the URL. Also, we have one question, so just let me know yeah. in good time. Um, now I think it's a good time. What's up? Um, we have a question saying, where does the plugin store the info from the config? Um, from uh, what which particular config? Uh, dot, dot flux rc oh uh, this is a good question uh i think it just uses it uses flux cli so wherever flux cli would look for that that's where it will look to and the current working directory is whatever the the open folder is so this is where it's going to look for flux.rc flux itself will look for it the plugin will not look anywhere else. Cool, thanks. Sure. Okay. So yeah, get repository part info. This is it's all good. Flux system, namespace, okay. Target namespace, default, YAML. Okay. So we want to we want to take this configuration and we want to put it in, in Git so that it is updated from, from, from GitOps. So using GitOps. So we're going to create New folder, and there we're going to create a new folder demo. And there we're going to maybe a new file. We're going to call the file app demo. Okay. And we're going to paste this right here. Okay. Now we have a git repository pod info. Everything is there, but it's not applied yet. And it's not even in Git. So we're going to find it for demo. And commit and say we now have Git. Uh, we have a we have our manifest in Git, but we don't have GitOps yet. So we want to create another thing where we tell it to synchronize um, from this folder and apply everything from this folder. So we're going to use the same configure, but this time we're going to use an OCI repository. So instead of applying this directly, we're going to push it to an OCI repository. And then we will apply it. So we're gonna call create a OCI repository called we're gonna call it OCI demo. Oops. OCI. I'm call it under 16 because that's okay. And the repository URL will be. Actually, will be a little bit different. It'll be this. What's OCI demo 16? And we'll have the latest tag. And uh, we're going to uh, create also a customization that applies this whole folder here and in Flux system. And then the target namespace will be Flux system as well. So everything goes here. And I think. We want to add another more one more thing. So we go to connection and we go to secret. This is a secret we'll use to connect uh, that flux source controller we'll use to connect to GitHub container registry. We'll create a secret later, but right now we're just gonna call it the secrets right here. 
There's also documentation built into this. So if some things are confusing, you know, you can click here and you can see what the secret reference is and, and why it's used. Um, but this should be correct, hopefully. I think your path is. Uh... Uh, my path is wrong once again. Thank you, Kingdom. Okay, so in this case, the path will be this because the contain we're going to we're going to build the OCI container, and we're going to pass clusters demo right to it. So the path will be this. And we're going to demo. Thank you very much, King. Okay, so this is now our GitOps um, bootstrap uh, type of uh, file. So we're going to create some called sync the demo, and this will tell Flux to read this folder and apply everything here to the cluster. Um, so any changes to the sync will also be synced. So now it's managing itself. Um, okay, we're gonna add it to Git. Okay, okay add that. So it looks okay. Commit and push sync changes. Okay, so now we have all this stuff checked into Git, but right now Flux doesn't know about any of it. Well, it should know about this, but I will delete it because it should not know about it. So we will delete this. Okay, now we have everything we want in Git, but Flux doesn't know about it yet. So we, we have to kickstart the bootstrap and tell Flux about the sync uh, that it can start Syncing the whole repository using GitHub. Demo. So now a bunch of things will happen. And it will not work in first. And I'll, I'll show you at first, I'll show you how, how to work through it. So we've created two resources in, in, in Kubernetes using Flux. Uh, first one is OCI repository, and the second one is customization referring to the OCI repository. So the OCI repository did not work, and it's trying to use this secret here to connect to the registry, but the secret does not exist. So we have to create the secret. And for this, we'll use the command line, and it's very simple. This is, uh, this is how we create the secret. So we do flux, create secret, OCI for GitHub container registry. This, this is name of a secret. This is a type of a secret. This is a container registry. And I'm using environmental variables that I've set. So now do any secrets. Okay. This is the authentication secret. So now it should be able to use this secret to connect to the container registry and try to find the full image. Okay, and now we have a different error. Now it's trying to pull the image, but the image is, does not exist. Um, so we need to build the image. In our slides, we had the CI step. So now I will set up GitHub Actions to, uh, to generate an OCI image each time we push something to GitHub. So I will use already uh, a, a workflow I have prepared, but it's in a demo repository. You can, you can copy it and change it later, however you need. We're going to create here, GitHub, and then we're going to create a folder called workflows. 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 Okay, then we're going to create a new file called publish. And inside this file, we're going to we're going to add, add the following action. This action is going to do this. It's going to set some variables and it's going to check out the code, log into GitHub container registry, and then we'll use this command line that we, uh, that Flux, this is a new feature uh, that will create and push artifact to OCI. This is, this is a target for the OCI. So we want that November 16th and it was, this is a path that, so it will take everything from, from this Git repository, but only from this path right here is the path manifest path. And we'll build an image and push it to OCI. 
So we can observe that now if we commit it. Okay, so we're going to go to GitHub. And we're going to go here. We're going to go here. And we're going to see the flux OCI. Okay, so this is the first time it's running. Maybe it will be a little slower, but we'll see all the steps to build and publish. Running, can see what it's doing again. It is checking out, setting up Flux CLI, logging in, and then pushing this. Okay, so it won't work. If we go to our demo, now there's a new package, and it has it has a digest. Well, it does not have a digest yet. A little later, but it has a tag called latest. Uh, so th this is it's pretty good. Now now we can now we can try and see if if Flux can pull this and then apply the configuration from 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 the artifact. So artifact you know let's try tell it to reconcile see what happens. Okay look now it's green so it found the artifact in this GitHub container registry, and it pulled it. Inside the artifact, it found that there is a Git repository defined inside the app called um, pod info and customization pod info. So now this OCI repository, uh, it refers to, to itself and to other resources, and it's continuously reconciling and applying them uh, to your cluster from Git. So this is GitOps in essence. Um, but we would like to uh, now be sure that if, if we are pulling uh, something from this container registry, from this URL, uh, to be to guarantee that it is, um, to guarantee the provenance of it. So we have to, uh, we, we're going to use cosign to sign each time an artifact is built. And I'll, I'll show it, I'll show it in, um, I'll, first I'll show you that I will add verification step, which will fail. And then I will set up cosign so it is verified and it doesn't fail. So we can now use GitOps for this. We, we want to update this OCI repository in Flux and we want it to sign, but I've forgotten how to do that. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna go to OCI repository and we're gonna open the docs and we're gonna find verification. So if we want, uh, if we want something to be verified, uh, the cosign, we just need to add this to the spec. So we will do that. Go to the sync, go to the spec, go this, and then and I just change the name of it. Now we have this in the, in the, in the OCI, and each time Flux source controller pulls, it's going to check the signature. We want to push it to Git to, to tell it about it. So, um, Sorry, uh, ESS, we have yeah. Few yeah. people who are very excited, but they so yeah. we went through the steps a bit quickly. So if anybody okay. wanted us to just re-explain yes. something, we're happy to do yes. that. Yes, yes, of course, sir. So, which, which part it was, but maybe you can kind of just um, um, revisit those maybe the last uh, two minutes or something just to replay what steps you just took. You don't have to show it, you can just kind of verbalize. Uh, oh, it. yeah, of course. Um, so let me go back. So the thing I did previously was I created a GitHub action uh, that will build OCI artifacts. And I created the GitHub action by adding this file right here. This is a special file that GitHub knows about or a special folder. Anything you put in GitHub workflows is added to your GitHub project. And it's it's a CI like Jenkins. And in this CI, we're defining some steps. And the key step is that each time 
you push something to GitHub, it will run Flux Push Artifact. What Flux Push Artifact will do is we'll take the latest in GitHub and we'll construct an OCI image and we'll upload an OCI image to the following path. So each time we push something to GitHub for this repository, Flux OCI demo, November 16th, this workflow will build a new OCI image. And uh, when you're in a repository, you can see the images that have been built by the workflow over here under packages. And you can see all the workflows under actions. Each time I make a commit there will be another thing here. So um, I want to update the, update the image. Um, so I've um, uh, now, so now we're going to make an update and it will be pushed into the image. And the update is to our OCI repository, which represents a package that GitHub built, but also GitHub is now managing it because it's GitOps. And we're going to our definition for the OCI repository and we're adding additional element here. It's a requirement that it is verified. So Flux knows about the OCI repository, but it's not verifying it yet. Now we're going to tell Flux before you pull something from OCI, make sure it has a signature. And instead of telling Flux directly, we're making a change in our, in our YAML and we're committing that to Git and that should be updated via Git. So I've made a change uh, and now I'm gonna push it to Git. And if I go to my code, there's a new commit, add verify to OCI repository. We have added this to the sync.yaml and this has kicked off another build for the OCI artifact. And now the latest code is being compiled and being pushed into GitHub container registry. And it was successful. So now we go here, we go packages. And now there's, now there's another one. So we see all the versions. There was one seven minutes ago, and then there's one that I pushed just now that contains the verification code as well. So because there's now a package in OCI that tells the OCI to verify itself, if we go here, it should fail, right? Because it's expecting the OCI image to be signed, but it's not. So now Flux has this OCI repository object and this OCI object is defined to verify. This came from, from GitHub, from, from Git via GitOps. But now when it tried to verify, it had a verification error. It could not find the secret called cosine pub. It could not verify it. So now we need to set up our OCI build that each time an image is built, that is also signed. So we are going to do that. So the way that we do that is we need to, we need two steps. One step is to modify our GitHub workflow to sign, to sign the newly built image. And the second step is to provide all the secret files to GitHub and to Flux to be able to do a verification. So first I'm just gonna sign the images in our workflow, but it will fail because we don't have any of the, any of the keys yet, but it's okay. So, so now uh, after we build the OCI artifact, we're gonna install, or GitHub is going to install cosine installer, and it's gonna write the secret key that doesn't exist yet, and then it will sign it. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna push this to Git and show you that it's not working, and then we'll make it work. So, so GitHub workflow sign OCI image. Okay, add this commit sync changes. Okay, so now we push to Git 
And that will kick off another action right here. I think it will take a second. Reload. Okay, so this is a new commit. GitHub is building an OCI image for this repository based on a new commit. And it is doing what it does before. The image is the image was successfully built, but we couldn't sign the image because we don't have any keys. So we want to tell GitHub about the keys that we could use to sign the images. And to do that is is pretty simple. We're using we're using OCI uh, command line, and I'm just gonna run it right here. And I'm gonna go to a different folder here, and I'm gonna run this. And demo November 16. So this is what we're gonna run. We're gonna pass a secret password, which you should do it in a secure way. This is just for a demo to cosign um, runtime. And we're gonna tell it to generate key pairs. And we're gonna tell them to upload the key pairs to, to GitHub. So this is really all you need to do. It does the rest for you. We're gonna run this. And so it has created a private key, public key, and the password. The private key is encrypted and the password is used to decrypt it. And it has uploaded all of this to GitHub. And it also saved the public key file that I can prove that I, I'm the originator of, of this repo and this OCI artifact. This is the, the key I can use to sign things and other people can verify it, you know. So, um, so um, if we go to GitHub and if we go to settings and if we go to secrets, actions, there's three things that were created, cosign password, cosign private key, and cosign public key. So now cosign can use these uh, as it runs its GitHub action to, to sign our OCI images. So we're gonna try, we're gonna go here and we're gonna rerun this. So we still have the same, still have the same commit. There's nothing new has been pushed to Git, but now Git knows about our OCI keys. I'm sorry, about our cosign keys. So it should be able to use these keys to sign to sign the artifact. Okay, so look at that. Sign published image. It ran the code. So it does two things. It takes the key from environmental variable, the private key, and, and writes it to disk. And then the next step uses the key file, the private key to, to, um, to sign the OCI image that was built from my repo. So, uh, so now Cosign, which is a globally available system, knows about uh, that this OCI image was signed with my public key and no one else can claim that it came from them if they don't have my private key. So let's see if, if this is now good enough and um, an OCI repository can now verify that it was in fact signed. And I think it will not work still. So now the image has been signed but the source controller is trying to verify that the image has been signed using a secret called cosign pub, the secret that does not exist. So we have one more step. We're gonna we're gonna tell Flux that that we're gonna create a secret called cosign pub, and we're gonna put my public key in there, so that Flux knows that uh, to verify something was coming from from my user, it must it must uh, work with this public key. It, it must verify a private key. So okay, now Flux knows about the about my key and the image was signed with my private key. So now if I try to reconcile again, it should maybe work. Okay, look, and it now works. And when you hover over it, now it says Cosign verified latest um, and the tag for the contents of the image. So now I have GitOps where I can make changes and commit them to Git. 
and then they will be built into an OCI image. The OCI image will be signed. And then if the signature is correct, the changes uh, in, in, to my repo will be applied to my cluster. Flux will, will do that. And it has a little notice here that verified revision using cosine. So if I want to make further changes, like I can change, you know, tag to 6.2.2, I can make this change. I can go 6.2.2 and then connect, push to get sync changes. Okay, and then the whole machinery kicks off. It now the Git knows about the new the new commit that has made the change right here. 11 seconds ago, kicked off the action. The action is building an OCI artifact and it is signing an OCI artifact. So we'll just wait for it to finish. Uh, we do have a question. Is this a good yeah. time? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, so how soon before we are able to package the Kubernetes manifest and the app inside the same container image? Uh, you can definitely do that now. You can package whatever you want in there if, if that makes sense for your setup. But we're just taking certain path inside an image, and one path could have your application, and the other path could have your manifest. In this in this demo, we're using just the manifest, but there's no reason you can't use it side by side. Also, just a three minute time check. So, just wanted to see where we are. Okay. Uh, sure. Yeah. So. We updated version to 6.2.2, built the OCI image, signed the OCI image. Now, um, now this OCI repository uh, in Flux has picked it up and it's been signed and it used the, it used the image uh, which contained this Git repository definition, which has 6.2.2. So now we are running this. And if we go back to, we go back to our example. We should be running, well, we should still be running 6.2.2 because there's an old part of the demo, but before it was running 6.2.3. So we have, um, we have made a change. We have made a change uh, to the infrastructure as code. And that change was packaged into an OCI image that image was signed with cosine, and then Flux, um, because it knows about this OCI repository, picked up the newly signed image, verified it using my public key, and because it is it is legit, it used that image to apply the new configuration to the cluster. So this is GitOps Bootstrap Lite example. That's that's kind of it. What I have for the demo. Um, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Right. Just a minute to spare. So um, I, I said we have a hard stop at the end, but if anybody has uh, key questions, thanks so much for all your engagement. Um, as mentioned in the chat, of course, everybody who attends these gets a recording, so we'll follow up. Um, maybe, uh, yes, you're sharing the link. So if to wrap up for the last minute, Vanessa, do you mind sharing our last slide on weave GitOps. We'll just do a quick mention. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, we uh, are so excited about Flux that we have our main product built on Flux. The layer with the web UI has is open source and free. So um, we can send you these links. So definitely check them out. You know, they're free and open source. So if you're new to Flux and you're using it and We've had uh, users in our community demo how they they use this free Weave GitOps and they find it very useful. So we'd love to get any feedback on that. Uh, and then of course, if anybody needs like enterprise level support or um, more features, there's of course an enterprise version, but the Weave GitOps layer is free and open source. So there's ways that uh, it can enhance your uh, use of Flux as well as uh, Visual Studio code, which we hope is useful too. So uh, you'll all get an email and we uh, look forward. If you have any questions, just feel free to respond to the email. We'll continue to answer them. And as I mentioned, um, we have many more of these events. We've got a couple more um, this month and next month and we'll continue into January. So uh, 
um, if you want to join our meetup group, we'll have that link as well. So thank you so much. Thanks, Jozas and Vanessa. And uh, thanks for your participation. We'll yeah. see you at the next ones. Yeah, thank you for your questions. Cool. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah.